greetings. I am Callum. <laughs> now prepare yourselves for things that are about to get silly. Right, the first thing I want to talk to you about is something that's always confused me, and that is how certain animals became associated with certain things. Like, how did pigs become associated with banking? Now, personally, my major problem with piggy banks is that because then, most people will own a small pig in their house containing 10 or 20 quid. Now, I feel this can be misleading, because imagine my surprise when I stumbled across a massive pig in a field. Now, obviously, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. <laughs> Let's just say that I was not best pleased that when I did smash it open, that all I discovered inside was the entrails of a pig. <laughs> And of other animals, as I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> and I've always wondered, how did ducks get associated with rubber, as in rubber ducks? Because as far as I can make out, the only time a duck and rubber would come into contact would result in a cute, innocent little duckling being smeared for 100 yards down the middle of the road. Is that really what you want children playing with in the bath? <laughs> Unless, of course, it flashes. In which case, wow. <laughs> technology these days. Anyway, while it's doing that, I feel I should let you in on a little known fact that is the slang term a rubber, meaning a condom, actually originates from rubber ducks because they are an excellent form of contraception. In so much as, in so much as if you're the type of person who carries a rubber duck around with you, it's very unlikely you'll end up having sex. Right, I'll just put that there. Anyway, now I'd like to take this opportunity to talk to you about something totally different. So I will. And what I'd like to talk to you about now is some advice my parents always used to give me. Now, their advice to me was that if I ever wanted to have any chance of getting a girlfriend, I'd need to remember that women deserve to be treated like queens. Which is, of course, means when I did first get a girlfriend, I'd protect her, I'd tell her exactly where to go, and use her to crush the armies of my enemies. <laughs> I really wish my parents had specified that they didn't mean queens from chess. <laughs> so of course... <laughs> Can you laugh like a normal person? <laughs> Anyway, of course, <laughs> because of the way I was treating my girlfriend, she left me, and tragically since she left me, she has passed away. Well, I can't help but think if she'd stayed with me, she'd still be with us. If she was killed by a bishop, and I'd never let that happen. <laughs> now, before I go any further, I have an important message to deliver to pet owners. And that message is, you need to be far more careful what you say to animals in public. Now, the importance of this was really drummed home to me when I saw a man walking with his dog down the street the other day. But then when a group of five or six-year-old girls tried to walk past in the other direction, the dog went mental, started barking, jumping at the girls. So the man was struggling with the lead and then had to shout this at his dog, Johnson, down, down Johnson, down boy, Johnson, down. At least, I really hope he was shouting at his dog. <laughs> because otherwise... <laughs> so yeah, as I was saying, pet owners, you need to be far more careful what you say to animals in public. Or alternatively, if you ever feel like you might shout at your penis in public, make sure you've got a dog just to sow those seeds of doubt. <laughs> now, I'm going to once again change the topic for no real reason, because I can. And what I'd like to talk to you about now is the state of our streets. Because I'd say they are a real mess, especially in the early hours of the morning, after people have been out drinking all night, but then no one's had a time to clean up in the morning. It's like I was on my way to a 9am lecture two weeks ago, and I came across some human faeces right in the middle of the pavement. And it was terrible. And you could tell it was human faeces and not dog faeces by the smell, the texture, the taste. <laughs> The worrying thing is, though, that isn't the most disgusting thing I've ever found on the pavement. The worst thing I've ever come across is a group of used condoms. Now, the most disgusting thing about it was, though, all the condoms were filled with fish paste. 
I mean, what if I'd been allergic to fish? I could have died. <laughs> Allow that joke to wash over you again. <laughs> Just consider its subtleties. I mean, I could have made that joke about having a nut allergy. But then again, most people expect condoms to contain traces of nuts. <laughs> and there was a pun. And... <laughs> it's probably at moments like this, most of you are wondering why on earth someone like me would decide to get into stand-up comedy. <laughs> But I'll have you know, at school I was in fact always known as the class clown. Although this was possibly less because I was funny, and more because I could fit 20 people into a very tiny car. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to give you another masterclass in how to change the subject. And what I'd like to talk to you about now <laughs> um, is the misuse of words. Now I'd say one of the most commonly misused group of words are words that are suffixed with phobia. Because aphobia should be an irrational fear of something. Yet there's ballistophobia, which is the fear of guns and bullets. Now I don't know about you, but I think it's personally reasonable to be scared of deadly weaponry. Now don't get me wrong, not all phobias are ridiculous. It's like, I've got an etidideophobia, which is the fear that somewhere in the world a duck is watching me. So I like to know where said duck is, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> but you guys, you aren't so lucky, which means you probably haven't noticed that throughout the whole evening, the duck has been watching you from the bar. Can I have it past here quickly? <laughs> quickly. Now look, you've got to look at it this way. If you don't notice when you're being watched by a blue rubber duck with an afro, <laughs> When are you going to notice that there's a rubber duck watching you? So just think about that and fear the ducks. <laughs> anyway, I feel I should answer your unasked question. You bet your ass it flashes. <laughs> joke, but I got that laugh. I'm running away now. <laughs> Thanks. I've been Callum Nagel. Enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>